Welcome back to another fun and exciting episode of Twine Game, where here we are going to do part two of Pokemon Quest, where we are going to do the ins and outs of how to play the game as quickly as possible without being distracted by commentary. All right, here we go. Let's first start by checking our base camp. Let's first go into decorations. All right, so as you can see for decorations, I have a couple different ones. They're already placed, but if you want to say, remove the decoration, you could go like this. Just placing it down is just a tap. And if you just want to rotate it, just this button right here, which is the yellow one. All right. So let's go in now and purchase one. So you go to your Pokemart, you go to decorations, and each decoration does a certain thing. I do have a lot of points, but I am going to save some for showing you some other things later. But let's just see what would happen if I bought one here. Let's see, Bulbasaur flag, see if level up training 1.5, increases drops. Increases blue drops. Chances for multi sockets. This is a good one because then you can use more power things right away. Awesome. All right, now let's place it. Uh, let's put it right here. Nice little golf bag. All right, now let's go into quests. Now you have your main quests leveling up. As you can see down here, I've finished a lot of them. And then there's challenge quests, like make 10 normal type Pokemon, or make a certain amount of fire Pokemon. The ones you really want to look into are the ones with special stones on them. This one would just recharge your battery. This one right here. Broad burst stone. This one would be really awesome to have. Belly button cave, eh? That looks like it would take a while to get to since we're not quite there yet. Now, let's just jump into the Pokédex here. Now, I had Caterpie. I brought him in. And then I evolved them into Metapod and Butterfree. So if uh, there's Pokemon, because you only have so much bag space, um, if there's Pokemon that you don't really want, at least you have them in your Pokédex. You can't just recall them. But uh, once you know the recipes for calling in certain types of Pokemon, you're more likely to get them. Now, here's the cooking pot. I'm just going to finish this one off, just so I can show you what what happens when you cook a nice meal. Brain food! It's a lot of sweet things and a few hard things. The favorite food for a psychic type Pokemon. Now when you do cooking, it brings in Pokemon. You don't just wander around and battle them and catch them like normal Pokemon games. In this Pokemon game, you cook food, the Pokemon come to you. Nice, execute. Though he's not a psychic Pokemon, I don't have him yet. So let me keep him. Now that we have execute, let's quickly go into the cooking pot. Now, as you can see, I have finished off a few recipes. At this point in time, I don't really care what goes into my pot. And then I will have a mysterious um, Pokemon later. Which you never can exactly choose which Pokemon you're getting. But usually, once you know the recipes, you can choose a general idea. The zero out of five means that I have to go on an expedition five times before the cooking will be done. And once the cooking is done, as you've seen, the Pokemon will come in. All right, let's edit our team before we go on an expedition. As you see, I have Butterfree, Magmar, and Farfetch'd. The only reason why I had Butterfree on there was so that I could 
evolve it. It is now evolved, which is awesome. Let's see if I switch Butterfree out with Execute. And uh, you just click and drag. You can also, if you want to train some Pokemon, but you don't actually want to deal with them, like you don't want to take them on the expeditions, you can put them in here. You can pause and read the training if you'd like. So, if I put Rattatat here, I would actually have to give up other Pokemon. So, if I say put this one here, it would only raise its level by that much. If I put this one here, it would actually raise it up an entire level. Um, I probably would only do this if I have a duplicate or like that. I have one that I probably won't use later and it's already evolved so that my Pokédeck is full. You also have learning moves. I believe this one is the success rate is if the Pokémon is more like that Pokémon. So if I say put this one here, the success rate is 60%. Whereas if I would have switched Rattatat out with another Pokémon and you have a duplicate, I believe the success rate is more likely to happen to learn a move. I had two Pidgeys earlier and died, put one on, and I had sent the other one to learn a move and it was 100%. I'm not sure if it's type-based, but it is like if you have a duplicate, it, you are more likely to learn a move. Here it shows um, right beside the HP and the attack, the little explosion to the right-hand side of it. It means Farfetch is more of a head-on kind of guy. Whereas if I switched over to uh, Zubat, Zubat, as you can see, it's a longer range. With the longer range, um, he doesn't have to be right up close to do the attack. Now, uh, Farfetch'd right now has an attack that is stealing. It's actually a charge attack, which means he will hit anybody that's in the way that he's facing. Also, while we are in the uh, power charms, I'll just take a quick look at these. So there's a difference in rarity with each charm. The gold one has three different boosts, whereas the silver one has two different boosts. This one only has one boost, and then the normal ones don't have any boost at all. Now, each boost uh, is different. Even if they are threes, it's not always going to be the same kind of boost, so sometimes you'd want to look into that. I like the HP recovery. It's definitely something that I look into because I always like my Pokemon healing themselves faster. Also, there are special stones that you could put up here. And with these special stones, this one here would reduce time for the next time you can use that attack. And this one actually produces a second attack. So what Magmar has here is a flamethrower. Because I threw that one on there, he actually has a double flamethrower now which kind of helps because Pokemon are always moving and to broaden the range of his attack is something that I really need because I always look at my screen and see which way my Pokemon are facing before the attack and we'll get into that just in a minute here. Now just as a quick thing, just like um, changing your Pokemon team members, you can actually just click and drag to drop onto the thing. But unfortunately, just to make sure, this one is a fist. As you can see, all of his things are fists which means all his slots are attack based. So you cannot put hearts on them. And the hearts are health based. But there are some rare occasions where some of them will show fist and heart. So you could put a heart or a fist on that one. And every time your Pokemon raise a level, as you can see in the bottom left, where it's partially yellow, it means that it is, that's the next one that's going to open up a slot for you. So the next one for him is going to be a fist, but every time you raise a level, it get closer to getting the fist. Now also while we're in the screen, you could also do auto select. Auto select doesn't always work great because it'll just usually do the strongest ones. So say I remove this one. Auto select is going to automatically choose that one of course, but if I remove this one and do auto select, it's just going to do the second one from the top. Obviously, I don't want to use that one. I want to use this one because I want him to have three different extra power-ups. Now, as you can see here, um, I have two boxes because I did upgrade my box. Um, you could also recycle if you're running out of space. 
which gets you more ingredients. I'm gonna quickly just jump out of here and jump back into here because we talked about uh, getting decorations, but um, you get 50 p.m. tickets uh, every 24 hours. You would get more if you were a membership though. Box expansions. So with the box expansions, you can expand having Pokemon, expand your stone box. I expanded my stone box once. That's why I have two pages for my stone box. Now let's go on an exploration, shall we? As you can see on these spots here that show the Pokeball, you see all these um, little Pokeballs in the corner of my little robot. It means that I have already explored them. I have finished all three. And then these three popped up. Now, as you can see, it says that the recommended power is 2,400. My current power is 2,517. But because I have a flying type with me, I have a bonus of 601. So don't forget where it says, uh, it says perched peak. And just underneath that, it says bonus type. Now for this one here, bonus type was grass. It'll be grass throughout the entire thing. And this one bonus type was fire throughout the entire thing. So once I got my Magmar, I was so happy. Fighting. I never I haven't had a fighting type yet. I wish I did. That would have been awesome. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a cooking pot that is bouncing. Once it is done, you can go back into your basic camp and collect your new Pokemon. Alright, let's go into a battle, shall we? I don't know how this is gonna go. I haven't used Execute before. But if I die, at least I can show you how to die gracefully. <laughs> Alright, in your battles, as we saw in part one, they automatically go. I can fire, steel wing, lash. This is fire blast. It just drops a piece of fire down on the ground. And if a Pokemon lands on it, then the Pokemon takes hella damage. Like these guys are right in front of them, so yeah. It pretty much just wipes them out. It's just like, yeah, yeah, you're just gonna, yeah, just go away. So this one's Flash. This is Steel Wing, which he just flies off into the distance if I don't figure out which way I'm going first. You can also run away, which is really, really important for boss battles. Uh, you see the boss doing a special move, you run. You run like the dickens. You don't want to get hit by that. Ooh, we're gonna fight Machoke. As you can see, my Magmar's health bar is really, really, really low. Whoa, why did he toss it all the way over there, Magmar? What the heck you thinking? Run away. Okay, as you can see, my Magmar fainted, okay? This is very important because I really wanted to show you guys something. So my Farfetch is just gonna run into the wall. Don't run away. Now after a timed limit, your, your Pokemon will actually come back, which is really neat. So if you're really close to dying, try running away as much as you can. Seems to be my favorite thing. There we go. Yes, we did it. We beat him. I was so worried about that. Stage cleared. All right, so stage cleared. Magmar, raised the level as you can see in the bottom. Uh, the socket moved a little tiny bit, so it's more likely to get it. But how slowly they're moving, they'll probably take a couple more levels. Like Magmar 3, Farfetch probably do. Oh my gosh, I didn't put any on Execute. No wonder he was so weak. I got some stones. They're not the greatest stones. I'll probably just recycle them for more ingredients. All right. Now that we've done a battle and we've talked about battle bonus, I just want to talk about one more thing, um, evolution. So in a battle, once your Pokemon levels up, even if it's higher level than its regular evolution, it will evolve. Uh, just like my Caterpie did. As you can see, there is Metapod evolving into Butterfree. Awesome, right? 
so whenever you want to do anything to your Pokemon, it's usually in this screen here. Um, you gave it the Everstone, the Pokemon will not be able to evolve now. So this button will make it so that you can or cannot let your Pokemon evolve in battle. You remember it's very important that if you really don't want them to evolve, press the button because as soon as the battle's over and they level up, it's too late. It'll evolve, you can't stop it. Anyways guys, that was my quick tutorial for Pokemon Quest. There's so much information that I had to get out to you guys. And thank you guys so much for being patient with me. This is Twine Game. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This is Twy out.